I have not posted in a while, and there's a really good reason for it. I want to change scientific computing and how it's done. Scientists should not have to be software developers to properly utilize the compute resources that they have access to. And if they want to build a large skill set in scientific computing, um, things can be significantly better than they currently are. If that already sounds interesting, you might like Kothar's project to bring scientific computing into 2025, a time when GPUs are prominent, quantum computers are getting closer and closer to utility, and AI is getting pretty good. So go to kotharcomputing.com and sign up for early access um, and updates. We are trying to change scientific computing for the better. Also, please check us out on LinkedIn and follow our page. Any and all support from the community will go a long way in ensuring that we can make the tools that the scientific community needs. So the world is approaching a point where computing is simultaneously getting more complicated uh, with more devices playing a role in simulation, most notably uh, GPUs. And also it's getting much easier to enter the computing space with AI tooling. Despite these trends in, in, in software and the computing space, I feel like scientific computing software is relatively uh, stagnant and slow to evolve. When students ask me, you know, what should I learn um, for scientific computing, you know, regardless of their community and the types of problems that they're trying to solve, I still frankly feel like C++ is the best option to give them if they want to live at the cutting edge of their field um, doing computation. And on top of this, whether or not you prefer Julia or C++ and you're in high performance computing, I frankly don't think it's reasonable for a top scientist trying to investigate already complex scientific topics to also be expected to be quality software developers uh, or computer scientists. In my case, for example, I've probably spent about 90% of my time writing and debugging code. I'm a physicist asking physics questions and I spend basically all of my time being a software developer. I feel like the way that people talk about scientific computing projects can be um, a little misleading. Usually you start with um, an interesting question, maybe, maybe a more ambitious, broader question, um, and you keep running into roadblocks. So let's say I want to prove X. Well, to do that, you need to prove Y. Y depends on Z. Is Z true, right? Um, Sometimes you go down these rabbit holes in the field and you realize, you know, okay, I need to go now run a, a simulation. Now, saying that out loud sounds really simple, but when you make that choice, sometimes that choice is a six month time sink. Maybe it's up to a year. Then once your program is even ready to write, um, you're booting that program up onto a compute cluster and running it for however long uh, you may need. And this runtime might be months, on a large amount of compute nodes. I have burnt a lot of compute in my day. Modern scientists have access to a large amount of computer resources. But the thing that I just described is, for the vast majority of researchers, a colossal waste of time and a major bottleneck um, to innovation, to research, to development. Not to mention, I, I typically would end up feeling very disconnected from the topic um, that I was working on. And to me, the worst part of it um, is that enough communities are solving sufficiently similar problems that you could create spaces that are very easy for researchers um, to get involved in. So if you look at, for example, quantum many body physics and the fields underneath it, like material science, chemistry, kinetic matter physics, uh, or more broadly, just quantum physics, none of us are really doing problems that are that different. Our Hamiltonians might look a bit different, but it's essentially the same problem, right? You want to isolate ground states, you want to calculate correlation functions, thermal states, dynamics, transport, um, and so on. Even zooming out a little bit more to partial differential equations, uh, these are things that we all care about, from financial modeling to physics. The pain points across all mathematical sciences are essentially the same. Even if two people um, down in the weeds um, they feel different, they are uh, essentially the same. And the world is changing really fast. Uh, quantum computers are getting good enough that a lot of fields have their eye on their potential. And I think the software ecosystem uh, being developed there um, leaves a lot to be desired. The frameworks are relatively weak. 
Uh, we're essentially patching old technology with new functionality to try and fit everything into an ecosystem essentially designed in the 90s. We don't really know the algorithms that will unlock research um, when combining classical and quantum computing together. The only thing that we do know is that in the interim, um, researchers are going to want to combine these two things to solve novel problems. And quantum computers will need classical computers to be useful. And moving on from the, you know, the looming age of quantum, if you want to call it that, um, GPU and other device acceleration um, is getting a lot more popular in scientific um, computing, uh, but it's still a rather deep dive for most people um, with compute needs in science. We still don't have a real robust way that is simple for scientists to boot up and use the compute resources they have access to, um, even if the university decides to spend money um, on these resources. And as of right now, it's a sincere um, career choice to decide whether or not you want to go down and put in the time sink um, to figure out how to use these resources um, or if you're not going to use these resources. This limits both the types of questions people can ask and also the amount of time that they're actually focusing on and thinking about their core subject. We are also like in this weird uh, beginning age where AI is becoming increasingly used, let's say. It seems to be particularly useful for developers um, in industries with well-known workflows and robust frameworks for solving problems. Um, AI is good at reasoning uh, when it doesn't have to reason too deeply or write a, a long block of code. It's also much better uh, with the more context that it has. Also, ju just to say, like AI isn't creating anything new either. And this is fundamentally a scientist's job um, is to push the boundaries of human knowledge. And so I think for the most part, apart from rewriting the same code that scientists have rewritten, millions of times in a variety of languages because people are just solving the problems in front of them and not really thinking about creating you know, new tools for the community. Um, AI for the most part uh, isn't actually a big productivity boost for scientists. So those are my complaints about the modern ecosystem. As they always say, you shouldn't really complain unless you have a solution. Uh, my solution is to start a new ecosystem with a new language, a new workflow, um, and attempt to abstract away a lot of the difficulties of modern scientific computing while also making minimal compromises on speed and efficiencies of solutions. This immediately gets us away from having to deal with um, any legacy decisions that allows us to build things with uh, new modern uh, concepts and innovations. Like as you'll see here, the like what I want to achieve is incredibly ambitious, but if we realize it, it will be an incredible uh, productivity boost um, to humanity's you know, research and development. So ingredient one um, for this new framework and this new ecosystem is Aleph. Aleph is a new language for scientific computing. It has syntax that might look familiar for the most part, you know, the good parts of C++ or JavaScript-like languages, um, and it has a lot of, you know, Pythonic-like indexing properties. But it importantly has a few, you know, fundamental features and designs that give us a longer-term advantage um, to really push um, its role in scientific computing. Aleph is currently an interpreted uh, language, um, but that is just because it is a proof of concept. Uh, it's designed with compiling in mind, so long term, um, we will see it uh, compiled um, and designed for heterogeneous computing. So we're talking quantum computing, we're talking using GPUs, and then we're talking about you know any other accelerator that people come up with in the future. Our goal here is to enable researchers who want to use, for example, our pre-built algorithms to be able to access you know GPU acceleration or other heterogeneous computing uh, workflows or perhaps just the best implementation of a CPU implemented algorithm. But our long-term goal is for Aleph to have a very, uh, very high quality performance for essentially minimal effort, but also to enable more advanced users to implement high performance code um, in Aleph. So there will be a little bit of a skill gap um, you just won't need to pay attention to it if you don't want to. Out of the box, Aleph comes with a standard scientific computing toolkit, but it also comes with a quantum many body physics toolkit 
covering things like exact tensor network and Monte Car Carlo type methods. Um, these are all unified together with, you know, common data types and representations of things like, you know, operators, models, lattices, um, and so on. The goal overall is to have uh, symbolic numerical and high performance computing coexist in one language without making sacrifices on complexity or performance. Other specialized areas will be developed for other communities. From a scientist's perspective, my goal here is to mostly eliminate the first six months of projects where you are just setting up code uh, to simulate the problem you care about. Unless you are specifically looking for better algorithms, then your whole job is to set up the code. But my second goal here is to make that type of exploration easier and giving you confidence that you are piecing together, you know, world-class workflows and algorithms that you'll know that your code will be significantly faster than if you had implemented it elsewhere. So the second big um, uh, ingredient to all of this is what I call the workshop. It's a modern development environment uh, that we want to capture sort of your work, your full workflow. So you can write Aleph code, generate your data, process your data, visualize your data, um, and then eventually talk about your data all in one place. Not all in Aleph code, there will be other you know, applications internal to the workshop. We have a lot of plans, for example, related to things like, you know, interactively constructing your quantum circuit, your lattice model, or some type of uh, discretization scheme for a partial differential equation or an integral. And then from those types of graphical user interfaces, generating Aleph code automatically. Or even better, imagine writing a LaTeX document and asking the platform to generate the code that corresponds to a plot that you are describing or from a calculation that you're describing. So these are big dreams um, and we're still in early days. Uh, me and my team have been working on Aleph and the workshop for about a year now. And this video is serving as the first of many of me talking about this project in later videos, um, I'll, be, I'll show you examples, I'll show you the workshop. But if any of this sounds exciting um, and you want to get involved, please visit kotharcomputing.com um, and enter your email address. Uh, we're going to invite uh, you know, a handful of people in October uh, to be closed beta users um, on our platform. And we would love to have your, uh, your feedback. So please sign up, follow us on LinkedIn, and of course, feel free to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel.